Hi there, and welcome to this behind the scenes look at how we made The Sears, a short proof of concept film that we produced for the uh, Film Riot Make Film Challenge 2020. Myself and a team of three other people produced The Sears for the uh, Film Riot Make Film Challenge back in October. And whilst we didn't make the final 20, I'm pretty pleased with what we did produce given the time constraints of the contest and the fact we're trying to produce a film in the middle of a pandemic is pretty hard. Rather than go through a blow by blow account of how we made the whole film from start to finish. Instead, today, I'm gonna to share with you three things that went well and three things that didn't go quite as well as I would have liked. If you haven't seen the series yet, don't spoil it for yourself. Click the link in the description below and then come back here afterwards and see how we made it. And if you find any of these insights useful, then please consider subscribing to the channel. I've got a lot more short films coming up and a lot more videos like this plan to go with them. Let's get to it. The final film is a little bit dark, but it would have been completely pitch black if I hadn't picked up a couple of newer LED light panels before we shoot. These great little devices are set to be a total game changer for my filmmaking. They're lightweight, portable, exceptionally bright, and they're affordable as well. I got two of them at 60 quid each from Amazon. If you're looking at these for yourself, then make sure that you get the 176S if you want to be able to change your colour temperature. We were shooting quickly and didn't have loads of time to work on the lighting setups between shots. What we were mainly focused on was directional consistency, whilst making sure we could see what we needed to see in the camera. My good friend Matt did a great job of manning the lights and uh, also providing a little bit of shadow when necessary. I watched a couple of guides on how to light a scene using a single light, the best of which is a shutterstock tutorial, but I've put a link to in the description down below. As the night wore on and we started to uh, run out of time, I didn't have the opportunity to light all of the shots that I planned to in this way. But where I did use compositing, I'm really impressed with how well the technique worked. Of course, this being a film shoot, there were multiple examples of things that I didn't plan to have to fix in the edit. My favourite of these is a whip pan of our actor Ken running past the camera. It's actually two takes spliced together, the only two usable takes that I got of this shot, and I'm using about as many usable frames as I can from each one. The shot in the finished film is just under a second long, but it's absolutely essential for building the tempo and for getting Ken across the 180 degree line. These were the kind of fixes that I absolutely love about editing. I have to admit that before I got this shot to work, I was starting to get really worried about the finished film. One of the things that I was not worried about in the slightest was Ken's performance. I've actually known Ken all my life, even though we lost touch as people are prone to do. A few years ago, we reconnected after finding out we both lived in Leicestershire. After meeting up for a coffee, we realized that we're both into, well, he's into acting, I'm into filmmaking. So naturally we started to talk about projects that we could work on. This film, was the right opportunity to work together. And as soon as we started to develop the character and the story, I was really impressed with the perspective and the insight that Ken was able to bring to the whole project. He let what we discussed about the character and the logic of the scene completely dictate his performance. It made the edit really fulfilling because in each take, there was a different aspect of the character that I could use. This collaboration was definitely a highlight of the project. But now, as promised, Going to take a look at some of the things that didn't go so well and what I've learned from the experience. As mentioned up top, this was a small production, so I ended up wearing a lot of hats. I was writer, producer, director, first AD, DOP, sound recordist, editor, sound editor, storyboard artist, and driver. As a director at heart, what I missed most was working with a DOP who could handle the camera work. My camera skills are okay, they do enough to get by, but my real focus, especially on narrative projects like this, is working with the actors to really develop character and performance. For this film in particular, I also would have loved to have worked with a production designer. I think we did what we could, but conceptually there are some pretty cool ideas left on the table. And that brings us really neatly 
on to the next point, which is probably my single biggest learning experience from the whole project. What I didn't find until I got well into production was I probably bitten off a little bit more than I could chew. There wasn't so much to do that I would have been better calling the whole film off. But as I started to run through script rewrites, storyboards, location recce, costume design, equipment tests, and tried to fit in doing all of that around a full-time job, I very obviously had to let something slide and concentrate on the biggest things that I needed to do. A real case in point of this is the final item on the list. One of the things that I didn't do in pre-prep, but I'm still kicking myself for missing, was storyboarding the monster reveal. It was the key scene of the entire film. And whilst I did get the coverage that I planned to do, I should have pushed more into it. I should have gotten a lot more of Ken's reaction. The reason I didn't focus on Ken's reactions was that on the night, I planned to have a big monster reveal. Yet despite our best efforts, because I hadn't been able to put in the time to prep beforehand, we ran out of time to make the effect work on the night. To me, it was a real shame because I think that if we had been able to put the monster front and center, it would have really sealed that creature feature feeling that we were going for. But that's why I consider this a real learning experience. Next time, taking these lessons on board, I'm gonna make damn sure we get a lot closer to the original intent of a project. So there you have it. Three things that worked well in making the Sears, which were my new lighting solutions, problem solving in the edit and collaboration with the actor. And then three things that didn't go quite so well. Should I try and do too many jobs, not giving myself enough time, and really screwing up the monster effect. If you've liked this video, or if it's resonated with your own filmmaking experience, then please do sound off in the comments down below. Likewise, if you made it this far, then please do give the video a like as well. That will really help the channel. And if you haven't yet, then please subscribe for more short films and making of content. Otherwise, that's all for me for today. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Rick, where'd you are? Whoa. And I think he did just crash, didn't he?